QA, A-level physics, turning points, and this is video number eight, and it's about wave-particle duality. So, Louis de Broglie, Louis de Broglie, Louis de Broglie, uh, 1924, came up with an idea. Now, it had been suggested that waves had particle-like properties, which was what the uh, photoelectric effect, how Einstein explained it. So Louis de Broglie suggested that particles, for example, electrons, may have wave-like properties. And that would explain a couple of things. One thing it would explain is that why atoms can only gain or lose certain amounts of energy. Uh, perhaps the electrons in orbit are, are acting a little bit like standing waves and hopefully you remember standing waves on a string can only exist at certain frequencies which are the different harmonics and maybe that's the same thing with electrons maybe the electrons somehow are behaving like standing waves uh, and they can only exist at certain frequencies wavelengths uh, and those harmonics are the different energy levels, like uh, N equals 1 would be the fundamental, yeah? Uh, and then the other harmonics, the higher energy levels, uh, would be where the electron has jumped up and it's gained energy. Uh, and then the photons, which are emitted or absorbed, can therefore only have certain frequencies. So this kind of idea says it relies on the fact that electrons behave like waves, maybe in this case like standing waves. Uh, and what he did, now a couple of equations which actually Einstein came up with, E equals mc squared and E equals hf, and he basically put them together but combined it also with relativistic effects. In other words, the increase in mass when things are traveling very fast uh, and the fact that distances uh, get shorter when things are traveling very fast. And he fiddled around with it and he came up with lambda equals h over mv. mv is momentum or lambda equals h over p. They use this symbol p for momentum for some reason. And this is wave particle duality. On the left-hand side of the equation, we have lambda. That's wave. On the right-hand side of the equation, we have momentum. That's particle. This is waves and particles in the same equation. And what links them together is Planck's constant. Wave-particle duality. Now, uh, 1937, a few years later, uh, experiments were done which actually showed electrons diffracting and producing a diffraction pattern. So this is electrons, fast moving electrons from an electron gun uh, pass through very thin layer of graphite, colloidal graphite. So you've got some very, very thin layers of graphite and graphite you should know is like carbon atoms. Uh, and the electrons pass through and the electrons are diffracted and then they fall onto a screen and we see a pattern. It's like a two-dimensional diffraction grating. Yeah, so it produces a circular pattern. What you need to be able to explain, the pattern gets smaller when the accelerating voltage is increased. If we turn up the voltage of the electron gun, the, the pattern gets smaller. It actually gets brighter as well. Now, why? Pause the video, make some notes. The answer is because, typical exam question, if you increase the accelerating voltage, the electrons have got more momentum. They're traveling faster, and so they will have a smaller wavelength. Uh, and small wavelength, if it's like a diffraction grating, means smaller angles, so the, the pattern is smaller. The pattern is brighter because the electrons have more energy, so you get more light energy. Now, this equation you need to know. This is your accelerating voltage. So we say EV is a half mv squared, little v. 
Yes, EV big V accelerating voltage is a half M little v velocity squared. So V is root 2K over M. Note that this is for low velocity electrons. This is for ones that aren't moving very, very fast. So we can ignore relativistic effects. And if we combine that with the, the de Broglie equation, we get this equation here, which you may have to use in an exam. It's on the formula sheet. Lambda is H over root 2 MeV, big V. Now where that's your accelerating voltage. So that's an equation you should be familiar with. It might come up in the exam. Any other evidence that electrons behave like waves? Well, remember Young's double slit experiment, and it was done with electrons in 1961. So an electron gun firing electrons through two slits, firing the electrons one at a time. And what happens is, look at the, the animation. We're building up a pattern where there's lots and lots of electrons arriving, yes, which is like a maximum. And then there's not very many electrons arriving, which is like a minimum. Uh, and we're ending up with something like uh, fringes, like Young's fringes. Now, this isn't interference because we're just firing off one electron at a time. What's actually happening is that the, the electron wave property is determining the probability that an electron will arrive at a certain place. It's called a, a probability density function. So basically, we can explain this, this probability pattern by looking at the, the wavelength of the electrons. So single particles are detected individually, uh, and this experiment has been done with other very, very small particles, what we call quantum particles. It's been done with electrons. It's been done with individual photons, one photon at a time. You still get the pattern, and it's even been done with atoms, and I believe it's been done with molecules, some small molecules as well. OK, so more evidence that small particles, quantum particles, have wave like properties. A very interesting experiment. It's uh, very important in quantum physics. So are electrons waves or particles? Uh, I think when you get to what we call the quantum scale, when you get to very, very, very tiny fundamental particles or fundamental bits that things are made out of, the distinctions between wave and particle kind of disappear. OK, on a quantum scale, all of these little bits and pieces that can behave like waves, that can behave like particles. They have wave and particle properties. I would say that something like an electron is more of a particle than a wave because it has mass. Yeah, it's a solid little thing and we know what its mass is, uh, but it behaves like a wave. Something like a photon, I think, is more of a wave. Yes, uh, it doesn't have mass. It does have momentum, though, but it doesn't have mass uh, and it tends to behave more like a wave than a particle. OK, it is. Uh, a bit mind blowing, hence the cartoon I've put there, which I think is very funny. Um, so, and this is wave particle duality. Tiny little quantum particles behave like waves and they behave like particles. In the macroscopic world, which is what we live in, big things like human beings, you know, you're either a particle or you're a wave, or you're like a solid object or you're a wave.